I was young, growing up in New Jersey, I was very into all things artsy. I tried everything that was available to me because that's what you did when you were a kid. It was called play. As I went through school, though, the arts education sort of fell away, and I got more into the sciences. So by the time I made it through high school and college, I considered myself a scientist and insisted that I wasn't a creative person. Of course, I didn't know that you could actually be both. I did have a little interest in photography, though, so I went to the main photographic workshops that summer, and there I was reintroduced to the wonders of play in the world of photography through a magical toy called a Holga. These simple toy plastic cameras were given to students to balance out the highly technical information we were learning about our regular cameras, and this was back before digital cameras made things even more complicated. It evened out the playing field for people and made it more about composition since there's nothing to adjust on these cameras. In fact, this is the inside of the camera. <laughs> and here's one I brought to show. It has a spring for a shutter, makes a great little noise, and a winding knob <laughs> for advancing the film. And that's kind of about it. These cameras take film. <laughs> Anybody remember film? <laughs> And so you actually have to wait um, to see your results until you process the film, which is something that a lot of people these days have never actually experienced. This is the first image that I took with the Holga, and I really liked the entire roundness of the image. So I created a hand-cut negative holder out of cardboard that gives it this round shape and its unique look, and I still use that same piece of cardboard now 20 years later. This is a classic Holga image. It shows off the quirks of the camera, which include light leaks and flare, the kind of things that you really wouldn't want your regular camera to do. Um, when you look through the viewfinder of the camera, you're not actually seeing what the lens sees, so you end up with things like this, and I call them gifts from the photo fairies. <laughs> when I moved to Seattle, I got involved with the Fremont Summer Solstice Parade which for someone like me who considered myself not an artsy person um, was a great opening to be able to come in and try new things and play and experiment and learn. And it's very welcoming. So I've been involved in that ever since. And I've been photographing it also with the whole guy using color film too. Now I'm gonna show you some photographs by people who inspire me, who are working um, with toy cameras in all realms of photography and combining it with a lot of advanced techniques. This image was made by using multiple clicks of the shutter on the same frame to create a sea of cars out of a Los Angeles freeway. This is part of a series of photographs that were published in the New York Times in the mid-90s about the changes in Times Square. This photograph was done for a high-end commercial client and it combines lots of advanced techniques, including advancing the film part ways so that the images overlap to make a panorama, which is something you can do since the camera doesn't advance the film for you. David Burnett has been a photojournalist for 40 years, and at some point he decided to try a different look with his images, and so started shooting with a Holga in addition to other cameras, to shake things up a little bit. Michael Kenna is a world-famous fine art photographer who started out doing night photography because of its unpredictability, but after decades of mastering that, he started using the Holga, which adds a new level of unpredictability to his images. This is a 20-minute long image made uh, tracking the stars at night, which is a sort of advanced technique that you wouldn't really think you would use with a $30 toy camera. And James Balog is a world-renowned photographer who works on environmental issues, and one of the series that he did was photographing endangered species with a Holga. Jennifer Shaw created a series of images with a Holga photographing toys with a magnifying glass to illustrate her experience of being evacuated from her home of New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina right before she gave birth to her first child, and she has a series of images called Hurricane Story telling this telling the story. Teru Kuayama is a photojournalist and a global TED fellow who takes along Holgas in addition to his other cameras when he shoots in Iraq and Afghanistan, and this image was made in Pakistan after the 2005 earthquake. And Ted Orling combines low-tech with high-tech 
to make images like this one, which he scans the negatives in Photoshop and creates a digital montage. So you might see, have seen images like this or made them yourself recently with your iPhone or Android. There's little apps now that kind of mimic these images. And while the images might look similar, it's a completely different experience of, sh of shooting them. When you're out working with a low-tech camera like this, it just does one thing. So the experience is much more focused than you have with a phone that does you know, everything else. In addition, the camera doesn't do anything for you. So if you want to control it, you have to think from outside the camera and apply the principles of photography to make it serve your own artistic vision. These cameras are light and cheap and silly and fun. And this is my special gold one for you guys today. <laughs> And after 20 years of shooting with them, I still love to explore the world with it. I like to call these the antidote to the tyranny of technology. Thank you.